gone. Meme review. What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers, and welcome back. Been a while? If you're getting some Groundhog Day vibes, not to worry, this is actually the second gun meme review in a row. We basically had an Afghanistan meme special for this last episode, which pushed a lot of the memes we already had uh, for the regular gun meme review to the side. So at the end of that, I asked if you wanted another bonus episode of gun meme review. And thank God I did that because holy shit, did some shit happen immediately after that video dropped. No joke, hours after that video went live, something big happened and not something good. If you have no idea what I'm talking about and weren't clued in by the title of this video, let me fill you in. The Biden administration, uh, on the heels of massive success on the national stage in Afghanistan, uh, has announced their new wave of sanctions against Russia. Random attack on Russia is successful. But what do these sanctions include? Well, most notably, it was a ban on Russian-made firearms imported to the United States. Not a big deal, considering most of those that we actually care about were already banned, so whatever. The real fucking dick kicker on this one is it banned the import of Russian-made ammo. Agonizing failure in foreign policy? Let's punish gun owners. Hey Joe, since you're giving the Taliban all these high-tech military assets and equipment, do you think we could keep our braces? Best I can do is ban Russian ammo, and I'm taking all the risk. If you're not quite sure why this is a big deal, let me attempt to fill you in. A pretty large percentage of all ammo that is available here in the US is actually made in Russia. Not the majority of it, but a pretty big piece. Most notably, AK food, which is stuff like this. Also, the majority of non-standard calibers that Comlock guys like me love, like 9mm Makarov, also made in Russia almost entirely. Pretty much all of 9x39, and a bunch of the cheap 9mm that was finally starting to come down in price. Normal ammo prices. Gun owners. Russian sanctions. The ammo was just starting to come down back through the stratosphere, and then this shit happens. In fact, we were starting to be able to find 7.62x39 for 26 cents a round again. That shit has not happened in a long time. Checking on Ammo Seek one day later, and the price of 7.62x39 steel case has doubled. Biden's import ban, AK community. If I don't look at ammo prices, it's not real. I've already went out and bought a bunch of ammo and calibers I think are gonna be hard to come by uh, or don't have um, production anywhere other than Russia. And at this point, I'm just praying that my order doesn't get fucking canceled. I have a question for Joe. Why? Ah, oh, we all know why. This wasn't done for Russia. Although Joe is so senile that he may still think we're in the Cold War, this was done to handicap gun owners. At least that would be my guess. This administration has made no secret of the fact that it despises us, and we really should not be surprised to see strategic moves like this made against us. Which is why it's important for all of us to stick together as a community right now. AR guys, making fun of AK guys over the ammo van. All ammo prices inevitably skyrocketing. Yeah, because remember, it's not just 7.62 and 5.45 and all those calibers that are made in Russia. A lot of the El Cheapo 223 ammo also made in Russia. Of course, this shit doesn't really run very well in a lot of subpar AR-15s because, well, <laughs> how do you know where that's going? But the point is, without this shit, one way or the other, uh, you AR guys too are gonna have a problem with the same amount of demand, but reduced supply. So AR guy, AK guy, whatever, it does not fucking matter. We are all in the same boat right now. Uh, some have it worse than others. I'm a big 74 guy, 545 is probably my favorite caliber. And it's in trouble right now. I don't know of a single company producing domestic 545 ammo. Thankfully, I have a fuckload of it because, I mean, of course. But every time I have to shoot it from now on, I have to think about my ammo supply and that's really not a good place for us to be. Come join us, ammo made in Russia, Wolf223 Remington. Yeah, so buckle up boys, this is about to get kind of interesting. And again, AK guys might be kind of in the center of this, but we are not the only ones affected. And I can already hear what you guys are saying in the comments, why don't we just take the ammo made from Russia and then uh, ship it to a country like Germany or somebody that we don't have sanctions against, and then we could just ship it here, ha ha. Okay, no, that's not quite how it works. So first of all, you can't just ship ammo to the States. You need an import permit. These sanctions are specifically talking about denying import permits for ammo manufactured in Russia, not just ammo 
that is being shipped from Russia. So no matter what country it's in, we're still fucked. Biden bans Russian imports. Domestic 7.62 by 39 producers. It's showtime. This is pretty optimistic, and unfortunately I think it is largely misplaced. Will domestic producers of ammunition uh, rise up to the challenge and meet this new demand in the market? Yes, I think so, to a degree. What I don't think any of you understand is how fucking long that takes and how much money that takes. Most of you guys would blow yourselves up if you were trying to reload your own ammunition. Now imagine starting from scratch, making casings, primers, projectiles, everything, and then loading tens of billions of rounds. That is not an easy operation. We are not gonna see domestic manufacturing capabilities meet that new demand in the market, at least for the next couple of years. And that frankly terrifies me. But it's not all doom and gloom. Um, it's not good news by any stretch of the imagination. I'm gonna be real with you, but there's other producers of ammunition in the world that are still imports that we can still get. For the surplus comblock guys, there's still surplus out there in Romania, in Poland, old Yugo stuff. There's, there's still a lot of stuff that's available and even some new production stuff like hell, this stuff right here, this Bellum ammo that uh, I get from Global Ordnance. Brass case, new production, 762 by 39 ammo made in Serbia. These are still things we're going to be able to get. So yes, supply is going to be fucked for quite some time, but at least we will still have an outlet. And that's about all the good news I got for you. I'm sorry. Let's move on to something else. So since the last time we did a gun meme review, well, not the one like three days ago, but the last, last gun meme review. Rare breed triggers forced reset trigger that was meant to simulate full auto fire or at least kind of a bump fire kind of thing has been deemed a machine gun by the ATF. Really not too surprising. Um, does it meet the definition of a machine gun? I don't personally think so. A machine gun being uh, a firearm that fires multiple rounds per single pull of the trigger, which uh, the rare breed triggers trigger does not meet the definition of. But just like in the case of bump stocks, the ATF don't really give a fuck what the law says. Um, if it's close enough to a machine gun, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, they're gonna call it a fucking machine gun. Is the rare breed trigger legal? Well, yes, but actually no. But there's a plot twist to this one. Yes, the ATF did send a letter out to Rare Breed Trigger saying that they're now going to consider their forced reset triggers to be a machine gun and they are to cease manufacturing operations. Rare Breed Triggers just flat out said no. They actually had their attorneys send this letter back, which I actually thought was extremely well worded, basically saying politely, it doesn't meet the definition, we will take you to court over this, and we're not gonna stop production because we're not breaking the law. This most likely made the ATF agent uh, reading this letter fall over due to the massive gravitational pull due to the just density of rare breed triggers balls. ATF to rare breed triggers. The FRT-15 is a machine gun and you have to stop making and selling them. RBT to ATF. No, the rest of us. Super ballsy move. Kudos to them. I'm interested to see how this plays out for everybody involved. Something that was also pointed out is uh, they, they also, uh, the ATF wanted to talk to rare breed triggers about how we deal with the triggers that have already shipped since those are clearly machine guns as well. Like if you made everybody who owned one of those turn it in, you're gonna have the same level of compliance that they had with bump stocks, which is to say, hardly fuck all. Rare breed, ATF, cast it into the fire, destroy it. FRT owners, no. There is no fucking way the kind of person that buys this trigger, specifically to circumvent machine gun laws, is going to comply with this kind of bullshit. It's just not the sort of thing that happens. ATF, Rare Breed, continuing to manufacture FRT-15 triggers. Damn, Rare Breed looking good. Non-compliance. So hot. ATF sends Rare Breed a cease and desist letter. ATF. So you're going to comply, right? Rare Breed. Factory noises. You're going to comply, right? factory noises speed up. Honestly, I have no idea what's gonna happen with this situation. I don't even really have any predictions, but uh, kudos to Rare Breed uh, for having a giant pair and uh, being willing to take litigative action against the ATF and not just roll over. Everybody says, oh, I will not comply, whatever, but when you have the real likelihood of your entire career being taken away and you being made a felon, that's not how most of you would actually respond. 
Rare Breed being put in this situation, um, they're handling this about the best way I think that they could. Um, they are not flat out complying. They're taking legal action against the ATF. And man, I really, really hope it works out for them. Okay, so we've been covering some really heavy shit so far on Gun Meme Review. So let's bring things back over to the lighthearted side of the force, shall we? So last, last Gun Meme Review, we broke the internet. Or at least we made Gun Meme Review history. I, I think it's the same thing. We actually got Flannel Daddy himself, Garantham, to be on the channel. Lots of memes about that ensued, and you know what? We've been covering some really serious shit so far, so I think that's a good way to just end this segment. A little bit of lighthearted fun to distract us from nightmare, 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 nightmare. Marvel, Infinity War is the most ambitious crossover event in history. Me, an intellectual. Yeah, it seems like you guys were really stoked for this episode, and I'm really glad. I'm really glad that uh, you guys enjoyed that crossover. It's beautiful. I've looked at this for five hours now. However, a lot of you guys took the opportunity to meme the shit out of it, which, come on, to be expected. All right, I know what we do around here. Reject tradition. Embrace modernity. Response to the, what is it, is the girls frontline thing, which I was unaware that's actually what it was. I've heard that being referenced a lot on on the Reddit and in comments. I had no fucking clue what it actually was, so when I saw this, I didn't know that it was gonna break the internet in the way that it did. But what's done is done, and I can't really take it back now, so here we are. My mom regretting not having an abortion. Me explaining why I want to fuck a gun. I did really enjoy how much Garantham seemed to get a little excited by that photo. That was, uh, well, apparently you guys noticed as well. You have nice thumbs. Oh my god, she called you command. She <laughs> of course, there was mention of an AK-50 being given to Garantham uh, in the baby shit Rhodesian camo pattern, which led to this Soldier of Fortune cover. Which I'll be honest, I don't really hate as much as I should. Maybe we'll fucking do that, I don't know. It's also a really fucking good edit, by the way. Now, some people did point out in this episode that the couch looked a little familiar. Perhaps a little... Too familiar. Hmm. And then you guys just got sexual and gross with it. Flannel Daddy puts a thumb into a hairy Texan gunsmith. <laughs> you know what's worse about this? Is that this video, whatever you're parodying, I guess, or pasting on top of, uh, it's uploaded by Brandon, but it has 20.8 million views, which is more than any video I have ever actually put up. Maybe I am in the wrong business. Or at least in the right business, wrong, wrong website. Now this one was so predictable, I'm actually embarrassed that I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Anyways, that was, that's probably enough of that thread. I love that you guys enjoyed having Garantham on there. He's an awesome dude. I enjoyed hanging out with him. Uh, if there's anybody else you guys would like to see be a guest on Gun Meme Review, please let me know in the comments. I really like that kind of format. I think it could be cool again to do in the future. So if you have anybody in particular you would like to see on a future Gun Meme Review, please let me know down in the comments. There is no sponsor in this video today. It is sponsored by you guys. This is just an extra bonus video because I love you guys and I want you to be happy at the end of the day. Probably not the right video for that. This was pretty fucking depressing, but... An attempt was made. <laughs> Anyhow, guys, I appreciate you watching to the end as always. And I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Bye, guys. Fear is my obsession to make the perfect weapon. Like us, put his eyes to the top. But I can't let you can stop, 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 can Gone. Meme review. Those are shitty claps. Let me try that again. Oh, god damn it, I picked up the wrong box. Oh no, that is the right box, cool.